Folks, welcome back to the Bible study. I hope we're on the air this time. Sure. We're glad you're with us wherever you are. And again, uh, the email address is out there for you to email us on. You can Skype us if you want to. Uh, it said no signal on the Skype thing up here, but I guess it's working. I don't know. But nonetheless, we want you to come and join us if you want to with, with any questions, comments. We're glad everybody's out there watching with this live on DVD, but we're glad you're there. I want to do, if I could, something I think is very important. I haven't, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've never had the opportunity to do so much going on. I want to share with you leaders of the world that have pledged and stated the fact that they want a new world order. Now you say, well, that's, that's cons conspiracy theory. Well, if it is, it's in the Bible. If the Bible's a conspiracy book, then it's, it's just conspiracy theory then. But it is biblical. And I want to show you that their literal plans or their own quotes, what they said about wanting to bring in their new world order with a world leader. But in Revelation 13, I'll read a few verses to you. Now I want you to listen very carefully. This is in the Revelation 13. This is in the book. And I know there are there have been hundreds of interpretations about what this means, what it means, how it works. I am not a prophecy teacher per se, but I'm watching the mechanism that's going to make this work come into place right now as we speak. The last job we showed you about biometrics and surveillance, voice and, and, and facial <coughs> scans and, and all the other things going into place to get us under control. This is going to be a matrix system that's pretty much uh, complete worldwide when it comes into place. It gets into the point where you can't buy or sell without the permission of the beast over their mark, so to speak, then you have to understand that we're in a beast system. And can I ask you a question now, this group in here today? How many realize that sometimes, even today, it's hard to buy or sell without a picture driver's license? It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I pretty much get in the system, man. Can't bank. You can't buy or sell without, without ID, can you? Can't bank. Now, Revelation 13. Mm -hmm. I want to just very quickly uh, restore you to verse 4. I read the whole thing, we don't have time to. They worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, the dragon being Satan. How many of y'all know that most churches they worship Satan? Mm -hmm. I got to make a point here. If you're not worshiping Christ, who are you worshiping? Mm -hmm. if, you're not, if you're not obeying Christ, who are you obeying? Satan. Is that pretty simple? Yeah. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who can able to make war with him? There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, that's three and a half years. Mm -hmm. He opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. It was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now you pay attention to this. I didn't write this. This beast, this power was given, they were given a power to make war with the saints and to what? Overcome. 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 I didn't write that. I don't like that part. But Frank, I didn't write it. And power was given, now listen, over, over all kindreds and tongues and nations, there's no place to escape, escape the beast. There may be some safer places, but there's no safe places. Right. And all that dwell upon the, on the earth shall worship him. Pay attention. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain the foundation of the world. So anybody who's not born again will worship the beast. Is that what it says, Frank? Yes. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, God himself says, all those that will not believe the truth, and have a love of the truth, that he'll be, send, them, send them a great delusion, so believe the lie and be damned. It's either Christ or nothing, all right? Now, I don't have time to fill all this. I really don't. But go on down and talk about the mark of the beast and cause all and small and great, rich and poor, behind and free to receive a mark, all right? Now, I'll, you say, well, that's, that's, that does seem kind of far-fetched. I mean, a, a worldwide power. There was a time, Phil Blake, when the world seemed so big and so vast and so multi-layered that no one could ever consider ruling the world at one time. Yes. But now it's, it's capable. They're, they're capable of doing that. Through many different media and, and means, they can just about rule the world. And it's going in place. Uh, who would have dreamed 50 years ago there'd be satellites in space that Iridium. could see you? Iridium. The Iridium, yes. The 66 satellites. Yeah. That they could, they could see you or your face pinpoint you in the world. They can read your license plate from space. That they can all these things. Who would have dreamed that? Who would have dreamed they had a capability one day? I called Joan Vion one time a few years ago. Joan Vion, Joan Vion. Mm -hmm. I picked up cell phone on the radio show, called her, and she was Australia or so I mean Austria or somewhere overseas, getting ready to get on a train. And I talked to her on a phone, on her cell phone across the world. Now fifty years ago that was unheard of. It was. It was impossible. And before, and I remember it was back in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, tried putting in a GPS tracking system. They put little metal plaques all the, all the ground, different places, little concrete pads with a metal pin in it to start mapping the, the world. And do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 
40 years ago, that was impossible to put GPS out and know where you are within just a matter of a few inches or right to precisely where you are. There wasn't anything in the cars to track you with at the time. There wasn't anything in your cell phone to be able to follow you like they do now. They can listen to your conversations with your cell phone with the phone off and even now the battery's out. Yeah. Well, now, reserve battery being into the phone. You yeah, exactly. You can't take it out. These are the things that people... I, I know for me it's it's a marvelous technology in some ways. Right now we're talking to you all over the world via internet. I can sit out down a holler here in West Virginia and talk to the whole world on radio, internet, uh, shortwave, but uh, 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 iPods. I, I don't know how it even works. That's if you holler real loud. I holler real loud, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you got to holler, then holler. But anyway, all these things are so marvelous convenient, aren't they? They're convenient. There is. There's an old song about Ricky Nelson sung one time. He said, it's late. The name of the song was, it's late. So we can't fall home when we spend our last dime. Now you don't have to. Yeah. you got a phone and call right, right in your pocket, man. Pay that down the number. Now, come on. Just let this sink in. Frank, we're seeing the matrix being completed. Right down to Ecuador doing facial and voice recognition for the whole nation. Mm -hmm. How far do you think we are from that is in America? India is doing it. India. Probably one of the most, the most impoverished nations in the world is doing that. Uh, was it me and people a day? Like, yeah, what is it? How many a day? Me and a day. Are doing this. That's because because of our Constitution, and which is really because of our Christian heritage, we're the toughest nut to crack. Yeah, exactly. That's why. We used to be anyway. I just heard yesterday <clears throat> from a gentleman whose grandson was sent home. They're starting biometrics in Montegelli County school system, and they're requiring that for all students. I don't have all the details yet, but I'll fill you in when I get them. Now, wouldn't you think that anyone listening to my voice, anyone listening to your voice, you talk to them, that when you say all this to them, they will start seeing this coming about? <clears throat> wouldn't you think they will start seeing it? There's come a time in this in this country, and around the world, but we're talking about America, where you'll not buy a gallon of gas or a loaf of bread without, or a loaf of bread without ID. It's coming out of that. Mark my words. Cash. But they won't even take cash. Yeah. No, oh, I can tell you a quick story. I went to Lowe's, or uh, I, I, I didn't want to buy from this place, but I, the only place I had that item I was looking for, um, which is Home Depot, because they support homosexuals. And, but uh, anyway, I went up there, I was going to order a tool, and I don't have credit cards or bank accounts or any of that stuff. I couldn't buy it because I, they, they wouldn't take cash. Yeah, oh. that's true. They would not take cash. I Nineteen a credit cities card or a debit card, but they would not take cash. Nineteen cities in Detroit, Michigan. Went up there for a meeting one time in a motel. Uh, I can't remember this fancy place. But anyway, they didn't want to take cash. They did, did not want cash. They did take it because I said it's all I got, but they didn't want to take cash. Nineteen seventies. I've got in hotels, same thing. Yeah. Without a credit, without a credit card, you can't get a room. Get a room. You have ID. <clears throat> anyway, these are quotes from people that y'all probably have heard of and know concerning the idea that they want the whole world population to be cattle. Mm -hmm. Branded, tracked, traced, probed, monitored, controlled by their power system. By the way, the way they do uh, reproduction with cows, we don't want that. No, we don't want that. No, we don't want that. <laughs> See if you can recognize this quote. It is the sacred principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter to which American people will henceforth pledge their allegiance. Who said that? George Bush, February 1st, 1992. That's Herbert Walker. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> this was said the Constitution of the United States needs to be reconsidered and altered to create a world, a whole new structure of government the talkers say fundamentalist biblical Christianity is both dangerous and repressive. Beliefs in international and in, in the nationalism, patriotism, and, and, this, and this exclusive God give birth to violence or repression. Only when we, the only when these dark ages menaces are swept away, can advance <coughs> can, can advanced wealth creation by the elite be achieved. Newt Gingrich said that. Hmm. Newt Gingrich. These new world orders that come. Yeah, they, they hope everybody's everybody's gonna, they're going to the be able to get everybody lined up and going straight. But look who's trying to line us up. They're not too straight. Uh, yeah. Uh, how I learned to love the new world order. Joseph Biden, April 1992. The truth of the matter is that you, that you do have those standby provisions. And the statutory emergency plans are there, there, there whereby you could... 
the name of stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke military and arrest Americans and hold them in detention centers. Mm -hmm. Representative Henry Gonzalez, August 29, 1994. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking 10 years ago. No, that's almost 20 years ago. <coughs> that was Not during, that was during <laughs> the Holly North uh, episode. Yeah. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time <coughs> Magazine, and other great publications the directors have attended our meetings and have respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop a plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But, but the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The, super, the supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite, I like that, intellectual elite, and world bankers is surely preferable, is preferable to the national Auto determination practice in past centuries. David Rockefeller. 1991. That to achieve world government is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family, traditions, natural patriotisms, and religious dogma. Rock Adams, director of UN Health Organization. No more independent thinkers. No one no one else can be a patriot to the nation. And you cannot have a religious dogma. H.G. Wells said, all religions must be subservient to the state or be eliminated. Now, the reason I went through all these is to show what the Bible says, bringing it up to the last 20 or 30 years, and longer than that, actually, to show where we are. We'll get some back in the 1930s in a minute. This is new. I wonder, since the fall of man, if Satan ever intended from that time to rule the world. I believe he did. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. Uh, today, America will be outraged if UN troops enter Los Angeles to restore order, referring to the 1981, referring to 1981 LA riot. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. Now, listen, this is oh, what the lieutenant ready, said. Yeah. Lieutenant, the lieutenant said there'll be chaos mm -hmm. and they're going to buy troops into the streets. This is especially true if they were told that there was an outside threat from Iran. Remember, remember Ronald Reagan? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. Whether real or promulgated, that threaten our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to see deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with that scenario, the individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. Dr. Henry Kissinger in France, 1991. No one will enter the new world order unless he or she will make, now pay attention, I didn't write this, will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. Mm. No one will enter the new age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. That was David Spangler, the director of Planetary Initiative of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Is it fitting in with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We shall have world government, whether you like it or not, by conquest or consent. Sta a statement of the Council for Relations, CFR member James Warbler in 1950. Mm-hmm. The governments of the present day have to deal with not merely with God, the governments, with the emperors, kings, and ministers, but also with the secret societies, which have, which have everywhere their unscrupulous agents and can, and can at last moment upset all the government plans. British Prime Minister Disraeli in 1876. 1876. Back before I was born. Yeah, Cecil Rhodes was working at that period of time. For New World <laughs> what is important is to, well, is to dwell upon the increasing evidence of the existence of a secret conspiracy throughout the world throughout the world for the destruction of organized government and letting loose of evil. Christian Science Monitor Editorial, June 19, 1920. Where were the preachers even then? Mm -hmm. The real menace of a republic is, the, is this invisible government which, like a John octopus, sprawls its slimy length over the city, state, and nation. Like the octopus of real life, it operates under the cover of a self-created screen. You know, you know what octopus, octopus does. It squirts out like an ink collar and things mm -hmm. itself. At the head of this octopus are the Rockefeller Standard Oil interests, a small group of powerful banking houses, generally referred to as international bankers. The little, the little cadre of powerful international bankers virtually run the United States government for their own selfish purposes. They practically control both political parties. New York Mayor John F. Hyland, 1922. How does that make you feel? Notice it's 100 years old at least. But then they knew about this. 
from the days of Spartacus, Weisskopf, Karl Marx, uh, Trotsky, Rosa Luxemburg, and Emma Goldman, the world conspiracy had been steadily growing. This conspiracy had played a definite rec recognizable role in the tragedy of the French Revolution. That's been what, the 1780s? Uh, no, the French Revolution? Yeah. No, that was in the 18, it was around 1830. Yeah, okay, yes, yes. 18, yeah. It, it, it has been the mainspring of, yeah. of every subversive good movement throughout the 19th <clears throat> century. 19th century being the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And now at last, this band of extraordinary personalities from the underworld of, of the, the great cities of Europe and, and America have gripped the Russian people by the hair of their head and have, have, have become the undisputed masters of the in, in, enormous empire. Winston Churchill, 1922. I want bring, I bring all this forward to show that this plan of world dominion started with Satan in the garden a long time ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why it's angels. Yeah. The real truth of the, of the matter is is this is as you as you and I know that a financial element in in the largest centers has owned the government ever since the days of Andrew Jackson. This is Colonel House, 1933. Y'all know that Andrew Jackson stopped the banks for a while. Mm -hmm. Right, and House was the one who was working with Wilson. Yes. He was a colonel, just like Ollie North was a colonel with Reagan, and he was the one that, that basically got the, uh, orchestrated the uh, Federal Reserve and mm -hmm. income tax. Yep, that's true. The real rulers in Washington are invisible and exercise power from behind the scenes. This is Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, 1952. 55 men have run America, and that's a high figure. Joseph Kennedy, 1936. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today, the path of total dictatorship in the United States can be laid by strictly legal means. As he always said, legal, legal. means. Mm -hmm. Unseen and unheard by the Congress, the President, or the people. Outwardly, we have a constitutional government. We have, op we have operating within our government a, a, a political system, another body representing another form of government, a bureaucratic elite. This is what Senator William Jenner, 1954. Now, folks, this was being seen long before I was old enough to know what was going on and before I was born. This is amazing. This, this viper, this snake, this slithering serpent has come in long before most of us were ever thought of. Be way before we thought of. But he came in so subtly. How, how, did, how did Satan approach Eve? Very subtly, right? Very, very subtly, yeah. I mean, he, he didn't come in and Say, eat this. <coughs> yeah. He, he came in and offered you something that you make you feel good. Yeah. He watched her for many, many, many years before he made his move. The trial commission is, is intended to be, to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interest by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The trial commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power political, monetary, and intellectual, and ecclesiastical. Now, let's stop for a second. What did I just say? They want full control of, of the political power, <coughs> financial power, intellectual power, and church mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would that make a one world unity mm -hmm. on all areas? Mm -hmm. What the Trial Commission intends is to create a worldwide economic power superior to the political government of the, of the nation states involved. As managers, of the, uh, as managers and creators of the system, they will rule the future. Barry Goldwater, 1964, mm -hmm. with a book called No Apologies. I wonder, is this important? Oh, yeah. I wonder, Phil Blake, if this is an important enough passion I warn the people about this. Right there, I tell people this is coming already here. <laughs> and they did not warn the people. This is planned hundreds of years ago. No, I think it's good to be yeah. warned. The thing to think about, too, with this is just because you have the United States and France and Germany, or the European Union as a whole, or the Soviet Union, even though they have all these different names, if all the countries are run the same and all of them take the orders from the same mm -hmm. person, that is one world government. Yes, it is. It doesn't have to be a declared one world no. government. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the concepts I think people mm -hmm. misunderstand. They, they, they're not going to come out and say, all right, we're going to pay with the world. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. The powers of financial capitalism had another far-reaching aim. Nothing less than to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole. This system must, too, be controlled in a feudalist fashion by the central banks of the world acting in, in, in concert in concert by secret agreements arrived at, at in frequent private meetings and conferences. The apex of the system was the Bank for International Settlements in, ba in Basel, Switzerland, a private bank owned and controlled by the world's central banks, which were themselves private corporations. 
The growth of financial capitalism made possible a centralization of the world economic control and use of, of this power for the direct benefit of financiers and the d indirect injury of all other economic <coughs> groups. This is a, a tragedy and hope, a history of the world in, in our time. Carol Quigley. Uh, yep, Carol Quigley quoted uh, and held, I should say held in esteem by Thomas, about William Jefferson, Bill Clinton, uh, Clinton. Bill, Bill Clinton followed uh, Quigley. He was his mentor. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The Council for Relations is, is the establishment. Not only does it have influence and power in key decision-making positions at the highest levels of government to apply pressure from above, but it also announces and uses individuals and groups to bring pressure from below to justify the high-level decision of converting the U.S. from a sovereign constitutional republic into a servile member state of a one-world dictatorship. This is Congressman John Rurick, 1971. Can you see how they've done this so suddenly with us? And the people love it because they think it's the right thing to do. Any comments? Even yeah, if they don't think it's the right thing to do, they think it's the best Best just to just go along, get along. Oh yeah. Well, the TV's coming on. Still, everything still looks good, normal feel. The term internationalism has been popular popularized in recent years to cover an interlocking financial, political, and economic world force for the purpose of establishing a world government. Today, internationalism is heralded from pulpit and platform as a league of nations or a federated union to which the United States must surrender a definite a definite part of its national sovereignty. The world government plan is being advocated under such alluring names as the New International Order, the New World Order, World Union Now, World Commonwealth of Nations, World Community, etc. All the terms have the same objective. However, the line of approach may be religious or political according to the taste of training of the individual. This was said in, in, in a uh, memorial uh, addressed to the House of Bishops uh, in October by the, uh, the Episcopal Church in 1940. Every computer in the county, when it comes on, has Global 21 and the Earth on it. Every one. Every, every computer. Global Unless, uh, 21, if it's, like as an agenda. agenda 21. 21. Yes. It, yeah. Our job is to give people not what they want, but what we decide they ought to have. Richard Selling, former president of CBS News. You sent a link to, to that where you go to the, what's that woman they named to institute that in the school system here in West Virginia? And they have a website, and it shows everything they're going there, to do. Yeah. Agenda 21 in the school The system. Agenda 21, yeah. Further, further global progress is now possible, but only through a quest of universal consensus and the movement towards a new world order. Michael Gorbachev, 1988. Mm -hmm. And we put him in the Presidio and gave, gave him, gave him a, an ex, the largest uh, naval base. Him and Ronald Reagan were good buddies. Mm -hmm. And Bush. And Bush. And they yeah. were all KGB or CIA. There is a power which we seldom mention in the House. I mean the secret societies, a great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great part of the portion of Germany, saying nothing of other countries, is, co is covered with a network of these secret societies. They do not, they do not want constitutional government. They do not want uh, 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 independent institutions. They want to change the tenure of land <laughs> to drive out the present owners of the soil and put an end to the ecclesiastical establishment. They want to get rid of the church. Mr. Benjamin Disraeli, British Prime Minister in 1856. Wow. That was 100 years before I was born. Isn't that something? <laughs> wow. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. Our minds are molded, our tastes are formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of, Walter Bernays propaganda in 1928. He was Freud's nephew and that piece of slime lived to be 106 years old. He takes credit for women smoking and, and fluoride and toothpaste. Women smoking? Women. Oh, women smoking. Okay. I remember, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's somebody smoking living before. But anyway, <laughs> the individual is handicapped. Now, this is a true statement. The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a with conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. Mm -hmm. Hoover said that. Mm -hmm. Herbert? Yeah, Herbert Hoover said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ed Edgar Hoover. Edgar Hoover said that it's so big that when you show it to people, it's like they can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. It's too big to phantom. It really well, is. Well, even, even we can't see it all. Hitler said, if you're going to tell a lie, tell a big one. People yes. are more likely to believe a big lie than a little one. In politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, it was planned that way. Mm -hmm. Eddie Roosevelt. Yeah. Now, was what happened in Connecticut political? Hmm. Well, they certainly made yeah. it political, didn't they? 
Of it course, in Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rising, if Sandy Hook <coughs> is is pointed to in that video as a place that they got to take down. Mm-hmm. True. I'd never heard of Sandy Hook before. I neither. It's right there. It's right there. It's the only. It's the only Gotham and, and, and Sandy Hook are the only two things you can read. Yep. And Aurora's in one building. Aurora in that one building, too. Remember that? Yeah. Aurora sign. Anyway, I believe that if the people of this nation fully understood what Congress had done to them over the past 49 years, they would move on Washington. It adds up to a preconceived plan to destroy the economic and social independence of the United <coughs> States. Senator George Malone, Nevada, 1957. 1957. First, they killed about, McCarthy when he found out what was really going on. And then somebody, they killed somebody else later in that, too, we'll cover in a minute. Mm -hmm. 1957, when they came out, 57 Chevrolet. Man, that was a good-looking car. Remember that 57 mm -hmm. Chevrolet? You know? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought in the world of you know? <laughs> anyway, these are, these are things that, as a young, I was only nine years old. And I'm seeing this come, come, I'm seeing it happen before I even knew what you must talk about. If you try to tell it to my dad, my dad is a wonderful man. You all know my dad is a good man. You know, he thought he thought uh, that John L. Lewis and and, uh, and Roosevelt were gods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt promised chicken in a pot and car in a garage. Mm -hmm. And he got and, elected three times. Yeah, exactly. And John L. Lewis was the head of the Miners Union, and he thought they were just absolutely the most fantastic guys ever walked because they brought economic growth to the country. They did it through socialism. Mm -hmm. They did it through uh, control. That's evil. But, they put food on the table. And they did it when there was a financial collapse. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Now, if you, uh, this is just a side issue. You all have stated the story about Joseph in Egypt. No, I have. Seven years of plenty and seven years of yeah. famine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did the Egyptian government take the land from people? How did they do it? They didn't do it overnight, did they? Mm -hmm. But with each succeeding calamity, they finally pledged their bodies, their, their, themselves, to the king. Guilty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Feed me and I'll obey you, Master. Yeah. True. Mm -hmm. You've been numbered. Not even that. You'll get, I mean, it's a, they're debt slaves if you give it to the bank. If you deal with a bank at all, you're a debt slave. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you, you're, you're collateral for the, for the debt. Yeah, you are. You are. that's it. <clears throat> the money doesn't exist until you sign the paper. America is like a healthy body, and its resistance is threefold. It's patriotism, it's morality, and spiritual life. And all three go together, you know mm -hmm. that. If we can undermine these three areas, America will clap from within. Guess who said that? Joseph Stalin said that. We were, we were a healthy body with resistance to eat to tyranny, mm -hmm. patriotism, morality, and spiritual life. If, they, so if we can destroy that, we got them. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's what you're doing. There. There's no such thing at this date of the world's history in America, an independent press. You know it and I know it. There is not one of you who dared to write your honest opinions, and if you did, you know beforehand that it would be and never, it would never appear in print. I am paid weekly for keeping my honest opinion out of the paper I'm connected with. Others, others of you are paid similar salaries for similar things, and any of you who wish to be, who wish to be so foolish as to write honest opinions will be out in the streets looking for another job. If I allow my honest opinions to appear in one issue of my paper, before 24 hours my occupation would be gone. The business of the, of, of the journalist is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of the mammon, to sell his country and his race for his, own, for his daily bread. You know it, and I know it, and what folly is this toasting in an independent press? We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They, they pull the strings, and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities, and our lives are all uh, are all the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. John Swinton, former chief of staff, New York Times, 1953. <laughs> 1953. Now, may I ask you, has our press got freer in the last 50, 60 years or not? No. Mm -mm. Do you really think you can watch ABC, CBS, CNN, and get honest opinions? Do you no. think those people are telling them what they really will think? Well, actually... You can get a little truth, but it's got to be right when the thing happens. It's got to be the local stations, and that's mm -hmm. why you heard there were three people arrested mm -hmm. up at, up up there. Well, the bombs in Oklahoma. The bombs in Oklahoma, yeah. right? Uh, um, now the New York Times did come out and say that there was that uh, Egyptian general that was paid a million dollars to to help build the bomb in in the world first World Trade, Trade Center, Center bombing, yeah. and he wanted 
he wanted fake stuff, and the FBI said, no, you want real stuff. And then when they tried to frame him, to, to hang him, he said, I got you recorded telling me. That was on page 16 or 17 yeah. of the New York Times. That should have been screaming headlines. Mm -hmm. but, see, so, what, but they, they clamped down that real quick. Right. The spark of truth, is it's, not, it's blown out real quickly. It has to be. And people are, too. They're too dumb to look for it. If you show it to them, that's a conspiracy theory, Phil. We are going to impose our agenda on the, on the coverage by dealing with issues and subjects that we choose to deal with. Richard Cohen, former producer of CBS Political News. In other words, they're, they're going to decide what they want to tell you, and you're going to believe them. The creation of an authority world order is the ultimate aim towards which we must strive. Now, let me repeat that. An authority, what's it mean, authority? Power. 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 Dictator. By force. We must strive toward this. Yeah, this is British Prime Minister Winston Churchill after World War II. Oh, yeah, Winston Churchill said that we can't end World War II too quick because, you know, as... Uh, uh, who was who was the Mason that said we need three world wars? Uh, Pike. Yeah, yeah Pike, Pike. You know, uh, it's through wars. Like if you read uh, a report from Iron Mountain, you cannot control anyone better than wars. Like the economy was a big one in the 30s, but that isn't anything compared to what you can do with a war. With war, you can take a president that's got a five percent approval rating and hero. jump him up to seventy percent overnight. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the report you mentioned at Ports of Mountain where they uh, showed a, a bomb going off and somebody said, well, that killed some innocent people. Why they call that? Collateral damage. That's acceptable collateral, collateral damage. damage. Yeah, collateral we, we damage. We killed 13 uh, Afga Afghans, killed one bad guy. But what's a big deal? Yeah, they blow up wedding parties. Oh, yeah. We have literally, uh, we paid for it. You and I paid for it. We financed it. The slaughter of millions of innocent people all over the world. And the only thing that I because we're heroes. I couldn't believe when... Uh, the, uh, the Inner Mountain had a picture of a Hellfire Patriot missile and said that we had taken out three cars of suspected terrorists in Yemen. Suspected being the Suspected. Country. In another country with a, with a missile. A secret, a secret combination that seeks to overthrow the freedom of all lands, the freedom of all lands, nations and countries, is increasing in its in, evil influence and control over America and the entire world. Ezra Taft Benson, 18, I'm sorry, 1899, he lived 1899, 1994. This, uh, this was uh, spoken during the Eisenhower administration back in the 50s. He said, this is 50 now. I remember Eisenhower, everybody thought he was a good guy because he was a, you know, the commanding general of the forces in Europe and, and he's president of the United States and he did warn us about some things. He warned about the, about the, uh, he didn't warn us until, he didn't warn us until the day he walked out. Exactly, the day he walked out, yes. But anyway, this was spoke of 100, 100 some years ago. I mean, I may have picked, well, picked some years ago, but hundreds of years ago, this has been shown to us. They want a world dominion. Why can't we see this? It's not hidden. It's written all around us. You know why they, they don't encourage people to read? You know why they, they let students to school can hardly write their name? Uh, people that can read, write, and reason are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Independent thinkers. Yeah, you can't have that. That's why Pol Pot killed everybody that could read. Most conservatives, by which I mean normal people, have little conception of the aggressive and revolutionary force that confronts them. It is revolutionary force that is that, that in, in one more time, it's revolutionary force in that it seeks to overturn the existing order, but differs from the spirit of Marx and Lenin in that it never proclaims itself openly. Tom Bethel, American Spectator, nineteen ninety seven. You see conservatives, Republicans are gonna save the nation. Can't even comprehend what we're saying. It's terrible to have to say this. World population <coughs> must be stabilized. And to do that, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. <laughs> Jacques Cousteau, 1990. Oh, yeah, he was... Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he's going now. He helped a little bit. The commitment of government to deal with the population issue is, of course, essential. There are, there are many ways to make the, date, the death rate increase. Robert McNamara, 1981. Now, I, this time I think that's been 31 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. He said this. We murdered 55 million babies. That's a good start right there for a country, isn't it? Isn't, this, isn't it, Frank? 3,000 a day. Yeah, 3,000, 4,000 a day. That's a good start, isn't it? Not to mention diseases we spread through the uh, uh, sexual deviance we mm -hmm. have in this country. Mm -hmm. the, uh, euthanasia, the euthanasia uh, movement that's coming forth with Obamacare. 
can't, why can't people see this is all planned? Life is cheap. Mm -hmm. Human life really means little anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone pays. Everyone, even the Illuminati, is going to pay. Oh, yes, they are. Yes. Only Satan is the one, you know, he's he's the only, well, he'll have his due too, but, you know. Maybe it's coming for everybody. For everybody, even Satan. Military are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. Who said that? Yeah. Was that Kissinger? Kissinger, 1976. Mm -hmm. What a time. Mm -hmm. Military are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. He said that in public. <clears throat> Guess what? We're still sending boys off to fight wars everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was, stupid animals. And he was a creation of David Rockefeller. David Rockefeller created Kissinger. The illegal we do immediately. Probably a clone. The unconstitutional takes so long. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's all right. The illegal we do immediately. The unconstitutional takes so long. <laughs> he also said that. Oh my. Now, the most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow the subject race to possess arms. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to read that again. The most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow the subject race to possess arms. History shows that all conquerors who have allowed their subjects to carry arms have prepared their own downfall by so doing. Guess who said that? Mm -hmm. Hitler. Mm -hmm. 19, 1934. And our 1968 Gun Control Act is word for word Hitler's 38 Gun Control Act. God hmm. bless the America we are crying, trying to create. Hillary Rodham Clinton. No, I'm going to <laughs> create that. Which guy was she talking to? <laughs> our government has kept us in a perpetual state of war. Duh. Mm -hmm. Kept us in a continuous stampede of patriotic fervor. Mm -hmm. I read this one time somewhere that where the dollar goes, the flag follows, and our soldiers follow the flag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. With, with the cry of grave and national, grave national emergency, always there has been some terrible evil at home or some monstrous foreign power that was going to gobble us up if we did not blindly rally behind it. Guess who said that? A very famous general. World War II and, and Korean War. Douglas MacArthur, 1957. No, he, he went against his own troops right there and the, the uh, what were they called the bonus bonus you know the troops that one of them their World War one bonus oh yeah he actually he actually was part of that uh, killing of, of our own troops yep, yep. Mm -hmm. but you know when this was seen in 1957 by General MacArthur right after the Korean War my uncle was in Korea during that war remember that mm -hmm. and, and and he said this we keep the whole we keep the country stampeded with a with a patriotic fervor Protect us from some kind of enemy. They control us through that mindset. That Cold War. That's exactly. That's what it is. Oh, what and when you go against that mindset, you're the enemy of the people. Mm, yeah. Uh, I'm a threat to their comfort zone. You are. The interest behind the Bush administration, such as the CFR, the Bilderberg Group, and the Trial Commission, founded by uh, Brzezinski for David Rockefeller, have prepared for and are now moving to implement a foreign world, a foreign world dictatorship within the next five years. They're not fighting against terrorists, they're fighting against citizens. Jo uh, Jonas P. Koppel, PhD from the former Germany Defense Ministry, uh, official and advisor to NATO, is this in 2001, November 2001. What, what happened in September 2001? World Trade Center. Yeah. And that's why he said, they're moving us to a world dictatorship. Be done in five years, he said. Well, you ain't got They are behind people. schedule, that's they are. true. Now, I won't be done a little earlier, so that's fine. It's time to discuss a few things. This I'll be pretty clear. There exists, now this I'm sure people recognize, there exists in the world today, has existed for thousands of years, a body of enlightened <coughs> humans, a body of enlightened humans, united in what might be termed in order of, of the quest. It is, comp it is composed of those whose, inter whose intellectual and spiritual perceptions have revealed to them that civilization has a secret destiny. The outcome of this secret destiny is a world order ruled by a king with supernatural powers. What are you talking about? The Antichrist. Antichrist. Yeah. This king was this, this, this king was descendant of a divine race. Mm -hmm. That is, he belonged to the order of the, of the illuminated. For those who come to a state of wisdom, then being 
then belong to a family of heroes perfected by human beings. Let me repeat that. For those who come to a state of wisdom, then belong to a family of heroes perfected by human beings. This is Manly P. Hall, the Mason, the, the Mason Secret Destiny of America. Hmm. Manly P. Hall. He said it pretty clear, didn't he? He was the most prolific writer of, uh, of the Masons. Now, in closing, we'll read a couple more statements here. I have several of his books. Remember, I just read to you by David Spangler that no one will enter the New World Order unless he or she will make a place to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the New Age unless he will have taken Lucifer in the initiation. I read that on a radio program back in the, back in the 90s. I read that. No one believed it. Even when I read and showed them coffee, they, they, they didn't believe it. But here's a couple things happen. People try to do something about it. The High Office of the President, and guess who said this? The High Office of the President had been used to permit a plot to destroy the American freedom, American's freedom, and before I leave office, I must inform the citizens of this plight. Who said that? Could that be Wilson? No. John Kennedy. John Kennedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 10 days later, he was dead. Mm. Yeah, that's true. 1963 is when he said this. Well, one more time? he said, the, off the House of the President had been used to permit, foment a plot to destroy the American's freedom, and before I leave office, I must inform the citizens of this plight. That's November, November 1963, Kennedy yeah. learned he was dead. Ten <coughs> days later, he was dead. Yeah. He, he did declare war on a New World Order, and, and I think he knew he was... Federal Reserve. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. He did, that's why he was did assassinated. Did he do the investigation with the Federal Reserve? Well, he started to. Well, he, he started to. He created... Uh, he created the United States notes. Yes, yeah. got, yeah. Treasure but note. But ten days later, he was dead. What yeah. a coincidence. Well, Christ was crucified three days after he kicked the money changers yes, out of the was. temple. Yes, that's true. Good point. The drive of the Rockefellers and their allies is to create a one world government combining super capitalism and communism into under the same tent, all under their control. Do I mean conspiracy? Yes, I do. I am convinced that there is a, such a plot, international in scope, generations old in planning, and incredibly evil in intent. Larry P. McDonald, 1976, killed in Korean plane crash, airline 747, shot down by the Soviets. Oh, yeah, that was the one that supposedly accidentally went over Soviet Soviet airspace and they shot, shot it down. No, but it I, wasn't shot down. It was, uh, it was, it was just taken down. It okay. was taken down. But these are quotes from actual people of their minds spoken about what was written in the scriptures. Now, if you can't tie the two together, then either, either you're dumber than a rock, or you simply refuse to see the truth. Either way, you're dumb, ignorant, stupid. The quotes are here to prove scripture. And the script, and these quotes prove the scripture. And the scripture, scripture proves what they're saying. And when you oppose it, as I just read to you, two people did, you walk on thin ice. Especially if, if, you, if you're in a, in a position of influence and power like Kennedy was, you're walking on a very dangerous soul. Kennedy was not a moral man, by the way. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Kennedy was a womanizer. Him and Marilyn Monroe had affairs. So did his brother Bobby with Marilyn Monroe and a bunch of them. They passed around like, like a used uh, doll baby. That's why she committed suicide. But nonetheless, she knew things on Kennedy's that they didn't want out. He was not a moral man, but he had enough backbone to say there's something wrong, and I've got to show it. In the 40th office, I will. Ten days later, he was shot with a miracle bullet that went to such shot three people. Yeah. Anyway, this is all proven facts in history. Now, in, anybody have any comments here? Anybody at all? We have 50 minutes early. I mean, we closed and we went over last time. You any comments? Yeah, the, I'm going to comment on, on the. Uh, <coughs> Lieutenant McCoy, sure. okay, um, his, his, a wise thing for him to do would be to be extremely open and, and talkative. Uh, if, if, if they think he has anything to hide, that's when they're going to go after him. <laughs> but they don't want, they still don't want to play, you know, they still don't want to wake people up. They don't make martyrs. No, and he would make a martyr now. I think Alex Jones, he, He's, he's over the top. Once you go over the top and you become a liability to them if they kill you, then they won't touch you. That's the whole point of being in the open like, like right. we try to be. We're hiding in open places. They know if they take somebody down, they pretty well know they're going to be questioned to ask. They're not going to do it when everything else When everything else is normal, they're not going to do that. When things are chaotic, they take out somebody like Alex. I mean, somebody else, it's no big deal. Who's going to miss us? They're worried about, eating, they're worried about feeding their family then. They're not worried about what's going on. But we're seeing it all happen right now. Quickly, the, the, as, as Stalin said, destroy the spiritual, moral backbone of the country. It'll come up, and, come up from the inside out. Well, we've done, he's done that. It's worked very well in my lifetime. 
before I was even thought of, 1800s, they were talking about doing the same thing. And these people are patient. They plant the seeds long before, about 6,000 years ago, the seed was planted. But they keep planting the seeds and cultivating it generation to generation. They're more patient in the goals than the churches are thirst. That's right. And, and they are a religion. That's why they're... They are. It's mm -hmm. continuous. They believe in what you're doing more so than most Christians do. Any more comments? See you next time.